The city of Pittsburgh launches its own city run trash service this week. I'm Samantha Walker and I'll have that story coming up. Plus, Jasper County authorities investigate a shooting they believe was in self-defense. And residents in Nixon, Missouri react to a new intersection in town. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Dow Quick. The city of Pittsburgh hopes to address residents' trash concerns with the official launch of a city-run trash service this week. This comes after many residents have reported issues with services like cards recycling and waste management frequently not picking up trash while still charging customers. KOIM Samantha Walker spoke with city staff and residents about what they hope to see from the new service. We've stuck with it um, until we get the Pittsburgh ones. Pittsburgh residents have a new option for waste management as the city officially launches its own trash service. This comes after reported issues with long delays and pickups from other providers. The city's always in trash. We've always been in the trash business. Um, what we're doing is just getting a little better equipment and assigning some personnel because right now when the trash doesn't get picked up by one of the contractors that's supposed to pick it up, it ends up falling to the city. The service is available for anyone within city limits or who receives city water. The city now has two designated trucks, hundreds of roll carts and dumpsters, and a designated team. So we're just making sure that we're there when they need us. If they want to use the city, they can. If not, we're going to pick up a ton of trash anyway because that's what we always do. City staff say residents aren't required to sign up for the city service. It's just another option. And because the trash service is supported entirely by its own fees, residents who aren't signed up aren't paying for it in any way. We spent a lot of time on the fee to make sure that it would cover our costs but not um, generate any additional revenue. Some Pittsburgh residents say they're hopeful for the new trash service. They believe that a city run one may have more accountability than other companies. I was really excited about it because typically if the city does it, it's very dependable, reliable. Um, you don't have to worry about large item pickup or even sometimes like recycling of leaves and branches and things. It's all included in your bill. And for a resident like her who has lived in Pittsburgh for 20 years, the new service is a sign of the city's growth. I feel like it's a sign that Pittsburgh is growing and uh, we're adding services and making things easier for the residents. I think it's a step in the right direction and it's good. Uh, for the residents of Pittsburgh, and I, I would hope everybody would sign up for it. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Residents signed up for the city trash service will not be charged for September as the new team learns the routes and the stops. Customers will receive their first bills in October. Nice day out there. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. Well, it definitely turned out to be a fantastic Labor Day for us today. Temperatures great, cooler than what we saw yesterday and up below, below our average high. 84 is where we topped out. 87 is our average high. Look at the record. 105 set back in 2000. Now we do have some mid and upper level clouds. These are going to slowly thicken up as we go through the night into your Tuesday. Here's the reason why we have a weak wave down to our south. Most of the rain will stay south of us, but we are definitely going to get the clouds, especially as we go into Tuesday. So we're going to start lower 60s, mostly cloudy. It's still going to be filtered sunshine. Once we get into the afternoon, notice a couple little sprinkles, maybe a quick shower along and south of I-44, but most of us will stay dry. 67 by 11, 61 by 7, back to 69 by 10 a.m. How long will the nice temperatures stick around? We're going to talk about that here in just a bit. See you soon. The Jasper County Sheriff's Office says a weekend shooting appears to be a case of self-defense. Happened at a home at 117 South 12th Street in Sarkonsi, Missouri. Deputies responded to that house for reports of a shooting and found 39-year-old Brian Jones of Sarkonsi with a gunshot wound. They took him to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The Sheriff's Office says the shooter was identified and is cooperating with investigators. The Fairview, Missouri woman convicted of shooting and killing her ex-lover has died in prison. 74-year-old Connie Sanders Ford was serving a life sentence at Chillicothe Women's Prison for the 2015 murder of 58-year-old John Jordan of Granby. Authorities say the two were having an affair, but after Jordan ended it, 
Sanders Ford shot him. Sanders Ford's death is considered to be of natural causes. Authorities in Cassville, Missouri are asking the public for help identifying the burglar in this security video. This video shared by the Barry Lawrence County Crime Stoppers shows the burglar breaking into Fury Printing in Cassville last Wednesday night. Fury Printing officials say this is the second time the business has been broken into. The burglar in the video is seen wearing a ghost face mask from the movie Scream. If you have any information, you're asked to contact law enforcement. It's been a month now since the highway at 160's newest intersection opened in Nixon, Missouri, and some local businesses say they've already seen a difference in traffic. It's only the second one of its kind in Missouri, and it's taking time for drivers to get used to. Adam Woodbury has more. Nearly a month after opening, traffic is flowing through the new intersection at Highway 160 and Route CC in Nixa. Drivers navigating their way through the new continuous flow design. When I first saw it, I thought, how is this going to work? <laughs> Um, but it, it actually honestly has worked out really well. And some of the businesses in the area say they've already noticed a difference. You know, we watch it every day just kind of out there. We haven't noticed a whole lot of accidents. It seems like everyone is really starting to get the hang of the new intersection. Since opening on July 29th, data from the State Highway Patrol shows troopers responded to a three-car crash there just two days later. But since then, though, State Patrol data doesn't show any crashes happening there. In fact, data, looking back over the last year, shows only one other crash happening there, and that was on July 16th. So those left-hand turns coming from the north is different. You're like, if you're not ready for it, you're going to miss it, and, uh, and you can't just cut across traffic that way when you miss it. So. Further down Route CC, Darcy and Berge tells me traffic along the road is noisier than it used to be because of merging lanes. There are a lot of people, like, honking and no, like, accidents that I know of for sure, but a lot of honking, like, because people are cutting other people off. While she has driven through the new intersection, she doesn't really like to, preferring to take a different route. Um, and then just because the intersection is so new, I have already seen videos and complaints about people um, not paying attention or going down the wrong way. But she believes the traffic in the area is already better off. I hope like once people get used to it, it's going to be a little bit easier. Like because the whole point is to make traffic flow better. Coming up, curbing distractions and helping mental health. It's back to school and we all hope students are actually learning while they're there, right? That's why there's a major push across dozens of school districts to kick cell phones out of the classroom. I'm Rebecca Castor in Washington with more on how mental health is also driving this effort. New research tracked more than a thousand kids from preschool through adulthood and found that early childhood education programs were associated with better health in midlife. The study published in JAMA Network Open found the childhood programs were linked to better cardiovascular and mental health, as well as better economic well-being and other social benefits. Students are back in the classroom, but more of them will be leaving their cell phones behind. A growing number of states and school districts are taking a hard line on phones and banning them during school hours. It's not just about limiting distractions. It's also part of an effort to protect students' mental health. Fox News correspondent Rebecca Castor explains. We all know teenagers who are glued to their cell phones, always scrolling, texting, and snapping. But with more data out there showing the dangers of social media, coupled with lower test scores nationwide since pandemic lockdowns, more schools are saying enough is enough. We recognize that for students to learn, they need to be attending, not just physically, but also emotionally and intellectually. Fairfax County in Virginia is one school district cracking down on cell phones. At some of its middle schools, students will lock away their phones in a magnetic pouch like this. Schools in Arkansas, California, Connecticut, and Texas are also trying this out. We think it's fine. Um, I think it lets us focus more. There are so many other problems that they can solve, but like they choose to choose this. If anything, they're just as addicted to our phones as us. When the school has a policy that, it, you know, to ban cell phones, it actually makes it a lot easier for parents to say, well, what do you need it for? You know, uh, no one in school has one anyway. You don't see 
students in the middle of a basketball game on the basketball court with a cell phone in their hand. They're not on theater on stage with a cell phone in their hand, right? They're engaging. We have got to break this uh, chain of isolation in our country for our children truly uh, to be mentally healthy. Mental health is a driving force behind many of these new policies. But some kids and parents worry about what they'll do in an emergency. Back in the day, parents used to call the front office, right? I think in cases like this, where the consequences and the stakes are so high for you know, the well-being of, of kids, that um, uh, we, we really should have done this a while ago. When Congress is back in session next week, lawmakers are expected to officially pass legislation aimed at making social media safer for teens. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Doug is next with a complete look at the forecast. And later, Missouri Southern football holds its weekly news conference as the Lions get set for a rivalry matchup this weekend against Pitt State. Well, of course, it turned out to be a nice Monday for us today. Not quite as hot as what we had on Sunday as we did go into lower 90s, but for Labor Day, it actually turned out to be a pretty nice day. Temperatures mainly into low to mid 80s for highs. And we're going to stay with the really nice temperatures as we go through the next couple days. So make sure you get outside and enjoy it. Plus, look at this. Our humidity is low. Look at our dew points. Upper 40s to mid 50s. So what that means for you, the way it actually feels outside, it puts us kind of in that refreshing upwards to pleasant category. And we'll take that. It's not sticky, muggy, soupy outside. So we're going to see the really nice conditions sticking around. 11 p.m., 67, 61 by 7, back near 70 by 10 a.m. We are going to have a lot of clouds. We have mid and upper level clouds starting to increase across the region. These are going to thicken up as we go through the overnight hours tonight. You can see they're thicker down through Oklahoma as we have this weak wave in parts of Texas. Most of the rain is going to stay to our south. We may get a shower or two which tries to get in here Tuesday afternoon, but most of you are going to stay dry. Better chances for rain as this system kicks out, but this won't affect us till late Thursday and then into Friday. Let me walk you through time. Temperatures stay great over the next several days. A lot of clouds, mid and upper level clouds, but still the sun's going to be filtering through during the daytime hours. But starting near 60 by the noon hour, upper 70s, once we get into the afternoon, I think most of us 82, 83, maybe 84 degrees. Notice along the south of I-44, a few sprinkles trying to pop up. Maybe a random shower here, 7.30 p.m. Still a couple showers, Southern Counties, Grand Lake, over to Tabor Rock Lake, through the night, and then into Wednesday morning. But once we get to Wednesday afternoon, sunshine returns right back into the mid 80s for highs. Day planner for you Tuesday, 61 in the morning, 77 by noon. High temp, very comfortable, very similar to what we saw today. Let's go through the rest of the week. By Thursday, some spotty little thunderstorms starting to pop up late in the day. Better chances rolling in Thursday night. We've got to watch that as well. Arrowhead, of course, the Chiefs kick off on Thursday evening, but scattered thunderstorms start to work in by the time we head into Thursday night, lasting into Friday morning and then clearing out once we get into Friday afternoon. So temperatures all week long look fantastic, even into Saturday. Look at this, high temps 80 to about 82 degrees and plenty of sunshine. How long will this stick around? Well, it's always gonna change. Here's the reason why. Upper level flow out of Canada gives us those cooler, more uh, refreshing temperatures. But once we get into early next week, high pressure starts to head back in. And as it does so, of course, the heat will start to return. 80s all this week. We are going to have some rain chances late Thursday into Friday, but then it starts to heat back up next week, which is week two of September and week three before we go back down the fourth week of September. So make sure you enjoy the fantastic temperatures this week. 84 tomorrow, 87 on Wednesday, upper 80s Thursday and Friday, and then 82s over the weekend. Dow? Looks good, Doug. Coming up, a trend discouraging so-called hero jobs. Social media content creators taking aim at certain jobs, forcing younger generations of Americans to look elsewhere for employment. I'm Connor Hansen in New York, and I'll have that story coming up. 
Thousands of hotel workers all around the U.S. began walking off the job over this busy Labor Day weekend. It comes after labor negotiations between major hotel chains and Unite Here Union broke down. The union represents front desk workers, housekeepers, and other workers who are demanding better wages and working conditions. Unite Here says strikes have been authorized to begin at any time in several other cities. Spokespersons for two of the major hotel chains, Hilton and Hyatt, tell CBS News they look forward to continuing negotiations with union members. De-influencing certain jobs is an emerging trend on social media. Content creators on apps like TikTok and Instagram are steering millennials and Gen Z away from crucial jobs at a time when younger job seekers are prioritizing work-life balance and mental health support in the workplace. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has details. Younger generations lean into social media as the source for information, and that includes job searches. 66% of all Gen Zers and 81% of college graduates are using apps like TikTok as their main source for career advice, according to research by healthcare technology company ShiftKey. Gen Z going on to social media, TikTok, Instagram, and seeing content that is really negative about these types of jobs, and it's influencing their decision about whether or not to pursue these careers. And it's actually having more of an influence than family, friends, and school. Digging deeper into the content, ShiftKey reports posts related to pursuing so-called hero jobs like Firefighters, teachers, and nurses are seen as overwhelmingly negative, steering job seekers away from those critical industries. One of the challenges with these jobs is that they can be incredibly inflexible, which can lead to burnout. And so I think what's important about social media is that people are getting a more broad picture about what this work is like. Social media algorithms are helping drive millennial and Gen Z disinterest in hero jobs, potentially endangering these fields long term especially at a time when they're already experiencing historic workforce shortages. Unless we figure out how to entice these workers into the field, we're going to continue to see that gap grow. I feel like my job is gratifying. Crystal Callison, a nurse and micro-influencer, says seeing both sides of a job can be helpful but shouldn't be the deciding factor. It's concerning that there's not um, a good reflection or understanding of nursing and how great it can be. The decision to do something for yourself should not be impacted so largely by other people's um, feelings about it. On the other hand, content creators are highlighting careers dubbed lazy girl jobs, remote roles that pay well. For example, 93% of the content related to pursuing a career in marketing is positive, according to ShiftKey. Experts say industries need to rebrand these hero jobs, focusing on what is most important to younger generations. If we don't start to consider our presence on social media, we don't start to think about flexible solutions and how we really can connect with this generation that's unwilling to sacrifice their mental health for their work, um, we're not going to be able to reach them. 78% of Gen Zers who avoided nursing say more positive social media content could have changed their decision. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Up next, we're going to learn where the Mega Millions jackpot sits as it picks up steam again. The Mega Millions lottery jackpot has climbed to an estimated $681 million. The cash option, well, that's merely a cool $336.1 million. Bucks. The jackpot swelled after no ticket matched all six numbers in Friday night's drawing. The next drawing is tomorrow and if there's a big winner it would be the seventh largest jackpot in the game's history could be you 30 more minutes of news weather and sports coming your way law enforcement did, has a new tool in the fight against opioids plus union town kansas celebrates labor day with two parades and a picnic you're watching the four states most watched news this is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Dow Quick. The Arkansas Opioid Recovery Partnership has launched a new project aimed at improving opioid analysis and reporting across the state. 
As reporter Brooke Buckner shows us, it's all part of the ongoing effort to combat the continuing crisis nationwide. I think it's so important of having data that's timely uh, helps people get to where they need to get. Now, communities across the state have this new tool to help them get that data more efficiently. It's called TrueNARC, and it will help schools, college campuses, and law enforcement agencies to easily analyze dangerous drugs at no cost. Our mission is to distribute those opioid funds that came in for cities and counties uh, respectfully out to organizations that will fill in the gap of solving the opioid epidemic in our state. Kirk Lane with the Arkansas Opioid Recovery Partnership says in our state alone, 429 people died as a result of the opioid epidemic last year, and 70% of those deaths were caused by synthetic opioids like fentanyl. But one of the gaps that we realized and the reason that we brought this project forward is understanding and knowing what your enemy is is half the battle. So now, instead of waiting months to find out what a substance is, it can be identified within just a few minutes with TrueNARC. Using the technology to push that investigation forward makes communities safer, it makes law enforcement or it makes people that are utilizing these instruments safer, and it'll give family answers quickly. Sergeant Tanya Soule with the Lone Oak County Sheriff's Office says her department has had this device for four years and they use it on a regular basis. She says this is a game changer for increasing safety for not only the public, but for deputies too, since you don't have to open the drug to find out what it is. You want to hold the substance directly up to it. And then once you hit scan, it starts to analyze it and it starts to scan it. It's not been productive to figure out what happened last year. We got to know what's happening right now, and that's the beauty of these devices. The 119th Old Settlers Weekend wrapped up in Uniontown, Kansas. Today, beware of dinosaur, really old settler. Residents and visitors participated in a car show, children's parade, and picnic in the park. The event also saw vendors from throughout the community set up to sell handmade goods, such as bows and jewelry and artwork. And Old Settlers Weekend included several raffles to benefit various causes in the area. We have sponsors from everywhere and they come here. They come for the car show, they come for the vendors, they come to get together with their friends, enjoy the park, you know, it's just, it's a good time for everybody. Picnickers also enjoyed food and craft vendors and carnival games on the Union Town Square. One shopping center in Kansas City has greatly increased safety by employing a security robot. It's busted plenty of criminals, but don't worry if images of the enforcement droid in RoboCop pop into your head. As Brian Johnson reports, it doesn't quite work like that. Hello, Kansas City. Security has a new look at Brightwood Center. When it comes to stopping crime, we're the best in the business. This five foot tall, 600 pound robot on wheels is named Marshall. Even the toughest bodybuilder can't pick up Marshall and move him. He's built on a smart car frame. The definition of artificial intelligence security guard. He has cameras in every direction, records 24 seven. He's the only unit of its kind in public anywhere near Kansas City. It is new to the Midwest. You do not see it here. Marshall reads license plates. He even knows who you are when you walk by. Anything that has an IP address, that IP address goes back to somebody. Marshall doesn't pack heat. There's no lightsaber, no taser, but he has caught real criminals. Marshall was able to provide the IP address and the license plate to the getaway car. Amanda Bellamere is the property manager. At first, she doubted people would like him. And the first thing out of my mouth was, no, it's not going to work. Now four months in, she says he's reduced crime by about 50%. I feel safer with it, most definitely. When I'm coming out from that gym late at night. Shoppers like the idea, especially after they get over what can be an awkward introduction. This area has always gotten a bad rap. Always gotten a bad rap. Bellamere says those days are over. Now they hope to be a destination place, especially for tailgaters heading to the game or World Cup. When it comes to this area, this is the safest area. Yeah, this is the safest shopping center. Marshall patrols the parking lot 21 hours a day. It charges itself at random intervals for 15 to 30 minutes at a time. If you want a robot to like this, better go ahead and win that to Mega Millions. It'll set you back a cool $300,000. A bit later, we're going to learn the secret behind the popularity of a favorite fall flavor. 
Well, of course, it turned out to be a nice Monday for us today. Not quite as hot as what we had on Sunday as we did go into lower 90s, but for Labor Day, it actually turned out to be a pretty nice day. Temperatures mainly into low to mid 80s for highs. And we're going to stay with the really nice temperatures as we go through the next couple days. So make sure you get outside and enjoy it. Plus, look at this. Our humidity is low. Look at our dew points. Upper 40s to mid 50s. So what that means for you, the way it actually feels outside, it puts us kind of in that refreshing upwards to pleasant category. And we'll take that. It's not sticky, muggy, soupy outside. So we're going to see the really nice conditions sticking around. 11 p.m. 67, 61 by 7. Back near 70 by 10 a.m. We are going to have a lot of clouds. We have mid and upper level clouds starting to increase across the region. These are going to thicken up as we go through the overnight hours tonight. You can see they're thicker down through Oklahoma as we have this weak wave in parts of Texas. Most of the rain is going to stay to our south. We may get a shower or two which tries to get in here Tuesday afternoon, but most of you are going to stay dry. Better chances for rain as this system kicks out, but this won't affect us till late Thursday and then into Friday. Let me walk you through time. Temperatures stay great over the next several days. A lot of clouds, mid and upper level clouds, but still the sun's going to be filtering through during the daytime hours. But starting near 60 by the noon hour, upper 70s, once we get into the afternoon, I think most of us 82, 83, maybe 84 degrees. Notice along the south of I-44, a few sprinkles trying to pop up. Maybe a random shower here, 7.30 p.m. Still a couple showers, Southern Counties, Grand Lake, over to Tabor Rock Lake, through the night, and then into Wednesday morning. But once we get to Wednesday afternoon, sunshine returns right back into the mid 80s for highs. Day planner for you Tuesday, 61 in the morning, 77 by noon. High temp, very comfortable, very similar to what we saw today. Let's go through the rest of the week. By Thursday, some spotty little thunderstorms starting to pop up late in the day. Better chances rolling in Thursday night. We've got to watch that as well. Arrowhead, of course, the Chiefs kick off on Thursday evening, but scattered thunderstorms start to work in by the time we head into Thursday night, lasting into Friday morning and then clearing out once we get into Friday afternoon. So temperatures all week long look fantastic, even into Saturday. Look at this, high temps 80 to about 82 degrees and plenty of sunshine. How long will this stick around? Well, it's always gonna change. Here's the reason why. Upper level flow out of Canada gives us those cooler, more uh, refreshing temperatures. But once we get into early next week, high pressure starts to head back in. And as it does so, of course, the heat will start to return. 80s all this week. We are gonna have some rain chances late Thursday into Friday, but then it starts to heat back up next week, which is week two of September and week three before we go back down the fourth week of September. So make sure you enjoy the fantastic temperatures this week. 84 tomorrow, 87 on Wednesday, upper 80s Thursday and Friday, and then 82s over the weekend, Dow. Doug, thanks. Coming up in sports, Missouri Southern football speaks out ahead of this year's Miners Bowl against Pitt State. Plus a preview of this year's Joplin Eagle softball team. Brock Baldridge has those details and more. Well, we move on to the second week of the Division II college football season. The Missouri Southern Lions are coming off a loss on the road against Midwestern State. And while well, this week the Lions return to Joplin facing their rivals, Pittsburgh State. The Lions opened up the season on the road, losing to non-conference opponent Midwestern State. This week, Missouri Southern welcomes in MIAA rival Pittsburgh State for this year's home opener. It's another edition of the Miners Bowl. Missouri Southern is aiming to beat Pitt State for the first time since 2013. Rivalry games, I don't believe in. Uh, I feel like we're a rival with the MIAA. I, my goal is to build a program that contends for conference titles. And, and so, yes, proximity ge geographically, Pitt State is right down the road. But I, I want to beat Emporia. I want to beat Fort Hayes. I want to beat Moet. I want to beat them all. And so, um, do I want to beat Pitt extra? No. <laughs> it just happens to be the game for this week. Um, going into Pitt, totally different game. Yeah, they're going to pass the ball, throw it around a lot more, a lot more RPO game. Um, we're excited for that. I can't wait for the ball to be thrown in the air. You know, that's something we practice against our offense a lot. So it's real exciting to go against a team that's going to mix it up a little bit more, and um, we're going to be prepared. 
Over to high school softball, the Joplin Eagles began their season this past weekend. Joplin is coming off their third straight winning season. The Eagles aim for a big year in a very competitive conference. Joplin opened up the 2024 season this past weekend at the Aurora Kickoff Classic. The Eagles begin the year with a 3-1 record. Not a bad start. The team returns five seniors to this year's lineup along with new faces and young pitching. Joplin begins COC conference play tomorrow at home when the Eagles face Lebanon. Offensively, I feel like you have some of the best hitters in the area on this team. Jaden Pankow, Abby Lowry, Ava Wolf. So I definitely think offense will be our strong suit, and then you still have a pretty solid defense behind our pitchers. At the end of the day, we want to make sure we're doing things right. You know, last year with the pitchers being so young, both of them sophomores, I think we understood that there was going to be a challenge there, and those girls really did a good job of rising to that challenge, and they've worked a lot on making sure that they are going to put us in a position that uh, we're going to be able to win. Well, this season has been hot and cold for the St. Louis Cardinals. The Redbirds are making one final playoff push for a playoff spot in the month as we enter the month of September. Labor Day in Milwaukee, Cardinals at Brewers. First inning, no score. Willie Adamas tees off right here, and that ball nearly gets over the wall, but it counts for a three-run homer. Cardinals lead three to nothing. Cardinal offense looks to respond, though. We go to the top of the third, Pedro Pages. Gets every ounce of this baseball. Solo home run cuts into the lead. Milwaukee still up 3-1. to one. So we go to the fourth thing. St. Louis, well, their pitching had trouble this afternoon. Keeping the ball in the ballpark. Reese Hoskins hits this one nearly to the same spot as Adamas did back in the first. A two-run homer makes it a 5-1 to one Milwaukee lead. We go to the fifth. Pedro Pages strikes again. He's 2-2 two for two with a pair of solo home runs to start this ball game. The Cardinals... Try to keep this one close, but we go to the sixth inning. All the ducks are on the pond for Jackson Chirillo, and he unloads them for a 420-foot grand slam. Brewers take down the Cardinals in the series opener. Milwaukee wins it 9-3. Meanwhile, in Kansas City, the Royals are three and a half games behind the first place Cleveland Guardians in the AL Central. But today, the Guardians win this one 4-2. Kansas City loses their sixth straight game. Both teams back at it tomorrow night. Well, that's your look for sports. We're back with more news after this. With summer fading off into the sunset, it's going to start looking a lot like fall. And with the change of the season comes a tasty treat that has a hold on millions of Americans. Fox News' Suze Guzman takes a closer look at the obsession behind pumpkin spice. For many, Labor Day marks the end of summer. But as folks soak up the last cookouts and beach days of the season, Growing number are starting to embrace the taste of fall as autumn creeps in. And what's a more signature way of celebrating them with something flavored with pumpkin spice? From coffees to teas and beyond, it's not uncommon for pumpkin spice flavored goods to flood the market this time of year. Data from Nielsen revealing Americans spend more than $500 million on pumpkin spice flavored products annually. And it turns out our love affair with these orange gourds goes back hundreds of years. Pumpkins are one of the oldest native crops in the United States. George Washington mentions pumpkin spice as part of his farms. So this is as American as it gets. Because many of these treats are only available for a few months, their exclusivity also drives demand. People like to be seen as, as showcasing that exclusivity, uh, having that type of conspicuous consumption of being associated with, with something that is special. Economic experts say pumpkin spice flavored items can even tap into consumers' emotions. It's about what lies ahead. The many beautiful things that we enjoy during the fall and the pumpkin spice is a way to signal that those things are coming. Meanwhile, the seasonal flavor is also a way for businesses to try to boost sales and attract more customers. This is an opportunity to get new people into your, your stores. And once you have those customers, it's an opportunity to also showcase what else you have in store for them to try. Sue Guzman, Fox News. Coming up, we're going to run through the list of the most anticipated movies of the fall. This fall brings long-awaited sequels, animated adventures, a big musical number, and more to the big screen. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin with more. Worries,
The ghost with the most leads Fandango's highly anticipated fall films after asking more than 2,000 moviegoers what they can't wait to see. One of the biggest films of the year, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It is a sequel to the 1988 classic starring Michael Keaton, directed by Tim Burton. <laughs> Number two is Venom, The Last Dance. Is it The Last Dance for Tom Hardy? That's the big question. Number three, Joker Foley Adu, another comic book character. Joaquin Phoenix returns for the sequel, but I think the bigger, maybe the bigger story is that Lady Gaga joins him as Harley Quinn. This film builds to be full of music. Transformers 1, I think a great example of an origin story that gets it right. It's directed by a Pixar veteran, Josh Cooley, who directed Toy Story 4. I'm here to take care of your problem. After that is Wolves with Brad Pitt and George Clooney as fixers with the same assignment. And The Wild Robot. This is the new animated film from DreamWorks Animation. Maybe a contender for best animated feature of the year. Then is horror remake Speak No Evil and horror sequel Smile, followed by the biopic Lee. Kate Winslet stars as Lee Miller. She was a fashion model, then she became a war photographer for Vogue magazine during World War II. Rounding out the list, The Return with Ray Fiennes and Juliette Binoche. It's a retelling of Homer's Odyssey. This is the third time that Fiennes and Binoche have starred opposite each other. Awesome. That's what I'm talking about. In Hollywood, Ashley Devorkin, Fox News. And that's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with video of Hans the Spectacled Bear at a zoo in Germany. Let's make it a great tomorrow.